Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hey everybody, welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this is the third segment in a five-part series all about shooting video on a DSLR. In fact, we began a couple weeks ago in episode 48 when we talked about shooting video on a DSLR. We talked about shutter angles and all kinds of neat, nerdy stuff. And then the following week, episode 49, was all about lighting for DSLR video. And this week, we're going to talk about audio. And to get great audio, we need to understand a couple of terms, and then we'll put all that into practice with some practical demos. So let's first talk about something called presence. Now, presence is a term that audio guys like to use when they're talking about what sound sounds like. And really, when you have something that's got very good presence, it means that you have audio that sounds like you're talking to somebody that's right next to you, and that's really what you want. If you have bad presence, it sounds like you're listening to somebody that's talking to you from way across the hall, and that's something that we don't like to hear. We want to hear nice, clear sound that's very present. Well, the second thing we need to talk about is something that a lot of people uh, call signal-to-noise ratio. And really what that means is there's always this noise that's present. And so when you have a microphone that's turned on, it's listening to everything. There's background noise, air conditioners, cars going by, tractors, whatever. And so that's the noise. The signal is the actual signal that you want to keep. It probably is a person talking. And so what you want to do is you want to have the noise level down low and the person talking very nice to high so that the signal to noise ratio is in balance and so you hear very clear audio. Now sometimes that will be the reverse and you'll have a lot of noise but the signal isn't very good. And that's usually uh, the case when you have a microphone that's not placed very well or if you have a microphone, let's say, that's on the camera itself and then somebody is at a great distance because that microphone is listening to everything and if there's noise that's louder than the person talking, then the signal to noise ratio is out of whack and we don't like that. So to make sure that we get good quality audio that has nice presence and the signal to noise ratio is right, what we want to do is we want to put the microphone as close as possible to our subject and then make sure, make sure that we have all of our audio levels set correctly. So it's a lot easier to show you this than it is to talk about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into our studio and walk you through some different microphones and let you hear how they sound. So let's get going. Well, let's talk about getting better audio from our DSLR cameras. Now, the first thing I suggest that you do is to stop using the built-in microphone on your camera. Now, the reason for that, there's a couple of reasons. The first, it's not very close to your subject, and so that means that it'll sound like somebody's talking to you from way across the room instead of talking to you face-to-face, -face, which is what you want. And that's what we call presence. It's where the audio quality sounds like you're having a conversation instead of listening to somebody way across the room. You want it to sound conversational. So the placement of the microphone is really, really bad. And the second thing, because the placement of the microphone is so bad, not only is it going to have that weird uh, bad presence where somebody's talking to you from across the room, but it will hear everything that you do to your camera. So if you're zooming in and out or changing any of the dials on your camera, all of that camera noise is going to go right into the microphone and that's going to show up on the video and we don't want that either. So the best thing to do is to use an external microphone. Now you can use a microphone like this. This is a Rode video mic and the cool thing about that is it's got a built-in shock mount and shock mounts are really important to microphones. And what it will do is, even though this is on the camera, because this is isolated using this shock mount, the adjustments that you make on the camera are not going to be translated into the microphone. Also, this is a shotgun microphone, so it has a, a pattern where it's looking at stuff coming right into the microphone. And so it's going to ignore things to the side and things behind it. And so it's going to have a, a better audio sound than the built-in microphone, which is listening to everything. Well, what we do normally is we use uh, different types of microphones that are a little bit higher quality. They're called balanced microphones, and uh, we use two different devices to do that. One, we'll use an external audio device, something like this Tascam, and this has these balanced inputs. They're called XLR inputs, and those allow you to hook up normal microphones that you would buy um, for uh, either on stage or interviews, things like that. So these are really nice. So this has a balanced input, and it also allows you to do all kinds of things uh, specifically for audio that's uh, more advanced than the built-in stuff that you have on your camera. So that's one option. The disadvantage of that is then you have to go into post-production and you have to sync the audio to the video. And so that's an extra step. Uh, but usually you'll get better audio separating video and audio. There's another option, though, if you want to use uh, built -in, uh, the uh, built-in 
input for audio with an XLR input for a balanced input. This is just an XLR uh, cable, and so that would plug in to something like this. This is called a juiced link. And what this allows you to do is to use all different types of microphones. In fact, Dawn's gonna come out here. She's got a couple of microphones that we're gonna show you. Now using this cable, I can plug it into the juice link, and then the other end, I can plug it into a different kind of microphone. So one of the kinds of microphones that we'll be showing you is this. This is a shotgun microphone. And again, you can see that this is uh, mounted on a shock mount. And so that's gonna isolate it, not from the noise of the camera, but from the noise of moving this um, boom around. So any kind of movement when you move your hands, that will go right into the microphone unless you have some kind of shock mount. The other thing that this does, it allows you to put this thing around the microphone called a blimp. And then around the blimp, you can put this fuzzy thing that we like to call a dead cat. And that eliminates any noise if you're shooting outside. And the way you use this is that you'll mount it above your subject and have somebody actually holding that. And what that'll do is it'll really isolate the sound and give you really, really nice audio quality. The disadvantage is A, you have to uh, have somebody holding that and B, you have to make sure that you have something like the juice link um, or some kind of XLR input. So this is what we recommend for the best audio quality, but it can be more time consuming and a little bit more expensive. Now there's another type of microphone that we use and these are the microphones that we use in our videos every single day. This is called a lavalier microphone. And what that means is it mounts to a shirt or you can put this uh, hide it inside of clothes. And this you can really mount close to your subject and that means that it has uh, better presence and it really does a great job. The thing is this is a wired microphone and so you'll have to run a wire to your camera or to an external device and so that might be limiting uh, on occasion but uh, these are the microphones that we use quite a bit. And then there's another kind of microphone that you can use and again it's a lavalier microphone. We don't have the microphone itself but we have the receiver and this is a Sennheiser microphone. You can see this mounts right to the hot shoe of your camera and then that would then run into uh, an XLR input like this one on the juice link. And then the other end would mount to somebody uh, with a microphone, a lavalier microphone like the one I'm wearing. And then they can move all around without having to worry about having a cable attached to them to an audio device. So we're gonna show you all of these different types of microphones and then also show you how to uh, make sure that you get the best placement of those, those microphones. And there's one other thing I need to show you and that's this thing, it's called a slate. What this does is not only does it help you keep track of the scenes and the takes in your video, but there's a clapper on here. And what that does is it allows you to put a, an audio marker on your file. So later in post-production, you can match the audio from an external device to the audio on your internal device and make sure that those are synced perfectly. And so we'll be showing you how to use this slate and the clapper uh, coming up next. So let's first look at each of these microphones and listen to how they sound. And then we're gonna be showing you how to do microphone placement as well as shooting outside when you're moving around and uh, getting some wind in the microphone. We'll show you how to eliminate all of that. So let's uh, get started. We're gonna have Don help us out and here we go. This is a built-in microphone on a 5D Mark II. This is a Rode video mic mounted on top of a 5D Mark II. This is a Sennheiser wireless mic. It's a lavalier. And we're using a juiced link to connect it to our Nikon D3S. This is a Sony ECM77B lavalier. We're using a juiced link to connect it to our 5D Mark II. Okay, the next microphone we want to talk about is this. This is a shotgun mic. Specifically, this is a Rode NTG3 microphone. And it's called a shotgun mic because it's very directional. And so depending on the direction that you point this, you're going to either include audio or exclude audio. So it's very important to know how to hold this and position it. And so I'm going to show you how to do that using a boom here. Um, and the other thing that we're going to be doing that's a little bit different is the audio is actually being recorded on this Tascam HDP2 device. And so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make sure that we sync the audio to our video. And I'm going to show you that in a second. The other thing I'm going to do is normally when you have an audio person that's dedicated to miking either one person or a group of people, you need to make sure that they can hear everything clearly. So if you can hold this for a second, Don. Um, the important thing is to wear actually headphones. And then when I'm doing that, I will be able to hear every single nuance of the audio to hear if there's any kind of clicks or pops or if this is out of position, it needs to be put somewhere else. So once we have all that set up, what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna position myself and show you how to uh, hold this microphone correctly. And then we're gonna slate and then we're gonna record some audio so you can hear what it sounds like. So I'm gonna come over here. And now what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that this is just out of the frame because it needs to be as close as possible to Don. So this is too close. 
but I want it just out of the frame. So previously we looked to see exactly where I could hold this so I can put this about right here. And then I need to point the microphone so it's gonna come right in there like that. Not like this or not like this, definitely not like this, but up here. So I'm getting audio from her voice just like that. Now that I have that, I'll have Don say test one, two, three. So go ahead. Test one, two, three. Perfect. And what I'm doing is I'm looking on my audio device to make sure that my levels are correct. If they're not, I would adjust those. So we preset those. Everything looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record on my device. This is recording. We've already hit record on our video. So our, our Canon 5D Mark II is recording. Now we need to make sure we click everything into sync. And so to do that, we're going to have Kelsey come out and slate. So my microphone's in place. She's going to point that at the camera and... Good, she's got a nice snap just like that. All right, we're gonna say action and read your lines, Don. This is the Rode NTG3 shotgun mic on a Rode Blimp shock mount. It's facing me now. And it's turned away now. And it's back facing me. Exactly, perfect. Just like that. It's pretty darn simple. And uh, that sync that we did with the slate, well, I'll show you in the next video when we talk about post-production, how to get the audio and video all perfectly synced up. But the next thing we need to do is really figure out what the rest of this is. And it's made for holding a blimp and a windscreen. And so to demonstrate that, I want to go outside and we're going to make some videos outdoors. So the next thing we're going to do is zip outside. All right, well now we're gonna take an external microphone. This again is the Rode NTG3 microphone. We're gonna put it on the boom. We're gonna show you how to shoot on location. And so let me just tell you the ingredients that we have. So first of all, Dawn is our model and she's gonna be giving us some testimonials for a fake weekend retreat that she didn't go on. Um, the audio that we're recording right now is being recorded by a lavalier mic that's plugged into my external source. So this is a Tascam HP, I'm sorry, HDP2. So the audio that you're hearing right now is being recorded on this device and we are gonna sync it with the video camera that's recording this. Now at the same time, when we start shooting with our DSLR, we're also gonna be taking this shotgun mic and recording that on our Tascam as well. So both myself and Don are gonna be going to this recording them on two different tracks so we can do all that uh, post-production magic that we're going to show you in the next episode. All right, so the next thing that we're going to do is uh, first I want to demonstrate uh, the noise suppression techniques that we have. So we're out here in a park. There's a little bit of wind, not much, but there's a lot of ambient noise. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to hear, uh, let you listen to what this sounds like with no noise suppression on it. So I'm going to just be silent for a couple of seconds and let you hear what this sounds like. All right, now the next thing I want to do is just spin this just a little bit so you can listen to the uh, cars in the background. So just by moving this, we get all kinds of different uh, results. Now the next thing I want to do here is I really want to uh, squash all of that wind noise. We don't have a, a lot of wind here, but um, I've done this shooting next to the ocean, and if you can believe it, all the wind noise from the ocean actually goes away. So to do that, what we're going to do is we have this thing called a blimp. And the way this goes on this, there's actually this rail here, and it tightens down, and it's going to hold this on. So what I'll do here is I'll have Don hold this. This just slides right onto our microphone, and so it slides right on there just like that. And then we have these two screws, and then those will uh, clamp that on there. So once that's on there like that, it's really nice and good. Um, what I'll do is I need to put on the last piece, and that's this little cap right here. And that goes just right on the back, this screws right on there. And that's why it's called a blimp, because it looks like a blimp. Now what that's going to do is that's going to help suppress some of the uh, noise, the wind noise. But it's really not enough. What we need to do is we need to add one more thing, and it's this big fuzzy looking device right here. Now a lot of people just call this a dead cat. I know it's not a dead cat, it's fake, but uh, that's what it's called. So if you hear somebody talking about putting a dead cat on a microphone, that's what they're talking about. So this goes on very tightly. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to slide this on here, and this will just take a second. Um, and I'll make sure that's back that way. This is going to go right on here. Then I'll zip the back on here. Now this is really nice and snug and that's what you want out of your dead cat. You really want it to be on there nice and snug. So now that I have that on there, I will just take our little strap here and I'll pull that and that makes sure that it's really on there good. And this has a little tab here that I can sort of throw this cord through so it doesn't uh, bounce around. Now that I have that, I'm going to make sure this is all sort of uh, brushed forward and that's going to help with the wind suppression. So now we have our microphone and we have our dead cat and everything is good. 
So the next thing we need to do is set our audio levels. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put on my headphones and then I have a meter on this that actually shows me how loud the audio level is. And I want that to hit just at where it says zero and not go over that. So what I'll do is, Don, if you can hold that just for a second, I'm going to put on my headphones here and then I am going to put this over here and Don, just give me a test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. And do it one more time. Test one, two, three. All right, and her audio levels look great. Now the next thing we need to do is get our camera recording. So I'm gonna turn on this light panel here. We've got that on. That's gonna give her just a little bit of catch lights. Kelsey's gonna come out. She's gonna start our Nikon D3S. And once that's recording, we need to slate to make sure that we can sync our audio. So let me position the microphone and go ahead and slate. Great. Now Dawn's gonna give us some fake testimonial from her retreat. She didn't go on, go ahead. The weekend was perfect. From the moment we arrived, everything was taken care of for us. Our itineraries were all planned out. The staff was so helpful with everything and the hotel was two minutes from the beach. So it was perfect to lay out, get to know everybody in between sessions. And as well as the food was, was really great every day. There was complimentary coffee in the mornings and spaghetti for dinner at night as well. <laughs> okay, so that's our fake testimonial. So there you have it. It's all the different pieces involved. It's an external microphone, an external capture device uh, with our little light panel to make sure we have a little bit of light in her eyes. And then our camera was an Icon D3S. We recorded that. So the next thing we need to do is put this all into our computer and do all the editing. But that's what we're going to do in the next episode of Digital Photography 101. We're going to show you how to put all of this together. But that's how we do our on-location audio capture. All right, well, being outside was a lot of fun, but I also want to show you how we did the audio for our interview that we lit last week. So here's how we uh, did all of our audio for our interview setup. So we just did a two-person interview, and I want to walk you through how we set up the audio for this interview. Now, we didn't want to use the, uh, the audio from a camera. We had three different cameras rolling, and so what we did is we captured the audio with an external recorder. Now, to make sure we could sync everything, the first thing we did was we slated uh, the scene, and so when the scene first started, we made sure we got a nice, clean snap. So we really hold it open and and you really want to do that. So when you're slating, don't be wimpy. You want to have a nice clean so you have a nice audio mark in post-production. And we'll show you why that's so important when we're doing the editing. So uh, we use this slate here. And once we did that, let me show you the microphones that we used. Well, we have some Sony lavalier mics. And these are omnidirectional mics that we just clipped to our shirts. Don's got a different model. But the nice thing is these are omnidirectional. So it doesn't really matter which way your head is pointing. It's going to get all of that audio. So we're going to walk around and I'll show you how we captured the audio. What we used is we used a Tascam HD P2 recorder. Now what that allowed us to do, you can come over here on the side and see we have our two XLR inputs. And so the microphones uh, are uh, being put in the left and right side. We're going to pan those to center so we have nice mono audio so it comes out both speakers. And then we were able to uh, record that on this device. Now because we synced using our slate, we can make sure that the audio and video matches up perfectly and that way we can separate the video and the audio and make sure we get the best signal from both video and audio and put it all together in post-production. All right, well, there you have it. Some practical demonstrations to show you how to get great sounding audio. Well, remember, we still have two more episodes all about uh, our post-production. So we're going to take all the stuff that we've done so far, our lighting, our audio, and shooting on our DSLR video, and we're going to put it on our computer and do some basic edits. I'll show you which edits are most appropriate at what times, as well as syncing audio and to make sure everything is in tune. And then finally, we're going to wrap everything up with an episode all about compression and making sure that every Everything is ready to go and look great on the web. Well, remember, if you have questions about photography, please send your questions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again in the next episode. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.